Inside of the concentration camp system, there were many people who worked in different roles. The SS were the administrators of the sites, and they were the ones who also guarded the prisoners, but many prisoners were forced to serve some of the guards, and work in different capacities. At Auschwitz there was one part of the camp known as Canada, a sorting area where prisoners were forced to sort through the belongings of the people who were sent to their deaths. But there were others forced into different roles inside of camps, serving superior and high-ranking officers and commandants. One woman who was forced to work as a maid inside of Krakow Plashov camp was Helen Jonas Rosenweig, who worked for one of the most evil commandants of any camp, Amon Gerth who was a sadistic brute who would shoot prisoners for sport from the balcony of its villa. But amazingly, Helen managed to survive the war and only passed away in 2018, at the grand age of 93. Welcome to the Untold Past. Join us today as we look at the untold survival of Amon Gerf's maid. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Helen Jonas Rosenweig was born as Helena Stenlicht inside of Krakow, on the 25th of April 1925. Her early life was stated to have been happy, and she had two sisters and lived inside of Krakow. She would have attended school and probably had many friends and acquaintances, but on the 1st of September 1939 her life changed. Hitler had ordered the invasion of Poland, and with this Nazi tanks and soldiers rampaged throughout the country, and caused immense suffering, devastation and death. They would brutalise much of the Polish population, and forced them into submission, but for Jewish families, they suffered heavily. Helen's family were rounded up, and after the Polish surrender, her family were sent to live inside of the Krakow ghetto. This was one of five major ghettos set up inside of large cities, and they were established by the Nazis. They used this system to persecute and strike fear into the hearts of Poland's Jews, and the persecution began as soon as the German soldiers captured the city. Jews were ordered to report for forced labour, they were forced to wear identification armbands, but following this the ghetto was established. It was guarded by German police, the Polish police and the Jewish police. It was enclosed by a wall made of stone and barbed wire, and the stones used deliberately looked like tombstones and were intimidating. It was a closed site meaning access to it was restricted, and Jews could not leave unless they had proper documentation and authorisation. When it was first created, it had 16,000 people living inside of it, and have 320 buildings inside. The Nazis ordered the windows looking out onto the area inside to be bricked up, so Jews were completely shut away from the outside world. Executions were common inside the city, and mass deportations did occur, with thousands of people being sent to extermination camps, where they were killed as soon as they arrived, or were sent to sites such as Auschwitz. But Helen and her family were held in the ghetto for a while, before in 1942 they were deported, from the Krakow ghetto and was sent to different camps. Her father was sent to Belzec and there was killed as soon as he arrived, but along with her mother and two sisters, Helen was sent to the Krakow Plashov concentration camp. This was a site where there were many executions, deaths from forced labour and the conditions were truly terrible. Prisoners were forced to work in the armaments factories at Plashov and also the stone quarry there. It was where many women and children were sent but as mentioned the death rate was high as diseases such as typhus ran rampant. Near to the camp was a large hill named the Hujerwa Gurkha where mass shootings took place with at least 8,000 people being killed outside there with shootings taking place a number of times each week. The inmates were often forced to watch these executions. Food was also very scarce and things were incredibly tough. The stern lit girls all arrived together and this would have hopefully made their ordeal slightly easier, being together a lot of the time. But on the third day that she was at the camp, Helen was washing windows inside of a barrack building, when the commandant of Krakow Plashov walked in. Amon Gerf was a formidable and terrifying man, who would take the lives of inmates without even a second's hesitation. He was known for executions and brutality, and when he approached Helen, it's likely she was incredibly scared. He spoke to her and commented about the work she was doing, and with this she was then ordered to go to Gerth's villa, and she would then begin work there as a housemaid. She was moved out of the barracks, to then go and work inside of the Gerth residence. Whilst inside of Gerth's villa, she would work alongside another maid called Helen, Helen Hirsch, 
and the pair lived together in the basement of the house. The pair were forced to go and work for him, but this work kept them away from the daily life of the concentration camp. For the next two years, the women shared the household work at the Commandant's house, and they continued to live in fear constantly, as they knew what their master could be like. Amon Gerth was known for being a sadistic and brutal man, and Helen noticed this first hand. She stated after the war that she saw him shoot prisoners from the balcony of his villa, and he would do this for sport. He would place his hat on his head, and would go out onto the balcony, watch the prisoners with his rifle aimed, and he would then look down the scope, and take shots at his inmates, as if he was hunting deer. The film Schindler's List would portray these moments, and many prisoners who had been there for a while, knew when Gerth was spotted on the balcony with his hat, it was time to hide. Helen continued to see his evil, and she would claim that she once saw him shoot dead a young Jewish man, who worked for him as a valet without any reason at all. Working inside the house was scary, but then Sternlicht had a boyfriend, who worked at the camp also, and was part of the resistance. She began to steal papers from the Commandant to give to her boyfriend, but after hearing that Adam, her boyfriend, was involved in resistance, whilst Helen Sternlicht was nearby, Gerf shot her boyfriend dead. Helen believed she would be killed too, but the Commandant never mentioned it. To send a clear message, her boyfriend's body was then hanged, in front of other prisoners for days, to send a clear warning to anyone thinking about joining the resistance, or trying to escape. But one man who regularly visited Gerf's villa was Oscar Schindler. He once said to Helen, Remember the people in Egypt, they were freed, so you will be too. Helen later said about Gerf, As a survivor, I can tell you we are all traumatised people. Never would I never believe that any human being would be capable of such horror, of such atrocities. When we saw him from a distance, everybody was hiding in latrines, wherever they could hide. I can't tell you how people feared him. Gerf was later relieved of his command, and was accused of failing to provide adequate food to the prisoners, under his watch, and also of violating regulations, with regards to the treatment and punishment of prisoners. He was so brutal, even the Nazis believed he went too far. But following Gerf's arrest, Helen was rescued by Schindler, and she said, Like magic, all of a sudden the doorbell rings. Schindler is standing there in his coat, and saying, You're coming with me. Helen was added to a list of workers for his factory, along with her sisters, and Helen Hirsch. Her mother, though, had died from pneumonia at the camp. But as the Red Army approached Krakow as the war had turned against the Germans, the camp was closed and the inmates were sent to sites such as Auschwitz. Schindler planned to open a factory somewhere else, using the workers he had in Krakow, and the men travelled by train, but the women were sent to Auschwitz. But following weeks of bribes accepted by the SS, Schindler managed to get the women sent to his new site. Helen and her sisters then spent the rest of the war in safety, and were liberated by the Red Army in May 1945. After the war, Helen Sternlicht testified against Amon Gerth in his war crimes trial, and he was executed following this. But two days after liberation, she met a man named Joseph Jonas, and the couple married, and then she emigrated to America with her family, the year after the end of the conflict. But interestingly, in 2004, despite being in her late 70s, she would meet with Amon Gerth's daughter, and they met and talked about her experience. What may have saved Helen was the job she was forced to do. If she hadn't have been selected by the evil Gerth to become a maid inside of his house, she probably would have succumbed to disease and forced labour inside of the camp. She may also have been sent to extermination camps or to other sites, but it was later Oscar Schindler's actions that prevented her dying inside of Auschwitz. The story of Helen's survival is an interesting one, and it's a story that deserves to be told. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.